just get this text right from her. It's a video of her in a gangbang with five guys all from her sushi shop. <laughs> Try to push me out, but I'll break that door down, man, because I'm bigger than you in your town. Not my fault, you ain't want to work for it. No breaks, never stopping, want to learn more. Selling tickets, making money, being funny, mouse running. Anybody want to say it round me? Shout some. Nah, didn't my fucking think so. You melt under heat like a lip so. Is it on now? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? It's on okay. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 100 of the Spearhead Sunday's podcast. Make some fucking noise! <laughs> All right, let's do this shit. Welcome to the stage, it's me! Welcome to the show. Let's let's get this shit started with, okay? This is episode 100 of the Spirit Sundays podcast. This is a. I'm really happy that you guys are all here. I'm recording this in Brisbane in front of a hundred people. One for every uh, podcast episode, not including 99.5. I think we do have half a cunt up the back somewhere. I don't really know. I think when I was. Uh, when I was backstage before the show started, I heard that I heard and saw like an eight-year-old somewhere out there. Is he is he not here anymore? No. Thank fuck. Because I was thinking I was gonna have to do this horrible human rights abuse of a podcast in front of an eight-year-old. But now we won't have to. Good. Alright. Oh, I'm gonna have to put all of the parts where I take my clothes off back into the show. Um, all right, well, thank you very much for coming out here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring on our very special surprise guest uh, to the podcast. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Josh Way. G'day, g'day. Welcome, Josh. Welcome Hello. Welcome to the show. Um, now, Josh Way is, uh, is a comedian and a very good friend of mine, and uh, he agreed on very short notice of about five days to just come and do an hour of stage uh, on stage of just made up shit. So thank you very much for agreeing, otherwise it would have been fucked. No, nah, no worries. Your audience is pretty fucked up enough, so <laughs> I don't have to do too much. Yeah, that's true. So um, I think what, what we could, what have you been up to recently, Josh? Me? Uh, I have podcasts myself, uh, inspired and started because you were doing one, so thanks for that. But um, Oh, I rack my idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, it is, it is good. Well, yeah, well, you rack Bill Burr's, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, okay, so no, uh, well, get the fuck off. <laughs> no, I, I will. I'll <laughs> go back home. Like, <laughs> Saturday. Nah, check out Josh's podcast, it's really good. And what else have you been up to? Uh, yeah, just interviewing a lot of uh, very interesting people. We had a person on my show this week that was a 47-year-old um, lawyer that became a song his business for $56 million, uh, became an ice addict, almost went to jail for it, got out of that, not an ice addict anymore, and makes videos with Jackson O'Doherty now. So... Um, they should have gone back to ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Not a problem. laughs> um, no, but that's, that's really cool. Thanks for, for joining me, Josh. Uh, I wanted to start off uh, this podcast by talking... Have you seen... Videos of like that robot luggage no. shit. I've seen videos of uh, that have been advertised to me of some luggage that is on wheels. It's battery operated, and you have a little remote that you keep in your pocket, and it will follow you around the airport. Are we that lazy? I think we've hit that point. You're walking already. Like, <laughs> yeah. yes, grip. <laughs> That's. I know. Like, if I, I I saw that shit, and I was like. First I was like, mm, kind of cool, and then I thought about the reality of it. Imagine having essentially what is a toddler following you, <laughs> behind you, that wouldn't operate. It'd operate exactly like a toddler, but I think sometimes when I see a toddler following a parent uh, in an airport, I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna kick that in the head. <laughs> <laughs> if I saw some gun being followed by his own luggage, I, I would kick that for sure. I, I would, yeah, I would, I would kick that person. I also kick, would kick the parents in the head that have their kids on the fucking leashes. No, I like the leash. Because I think that's, if that's them going, I really fucked up here. <laughs> I can't control my child, but I have a leash to keep it away from you. I like how they wrap it in, like, it's always like a lion backpack or something just makes it sort of cute. And it's like, no, your child's on a fucking leash. <laughs> <laughs> my little brother actually needed a leash. He d okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
I didn't. I didn't need one. I was. I was always fucking mama's boy. But he, my brother was just an. What he would just run. Yeah, he would just run away. Oh. and Just wouldn't listen. I remember a uh, perfect example of the difference between me and my brother was one time we went to a shopping center and mum was going down like concrete stairs in the right. in like the car park. And she fell down the stairs. She slipped. And I ran and was like, oh, mommy, are you okay? We were like eight years old. And then he stayed at the top of all that stairs just pissing himself, <laughs> uh, laughing at it. Jeez, you know those, uh, that family in America, they're like 13 children mm. in the house. They were like chained up to like the... the oh, yeah. And stuff. That's pretty fucked. But that's a bu- I'm not saying that's the same as putting a leash on a child, but... That's oh, it's a much wild. stronger leash. Uh, possibly. Yeah, it's but they... One is to keep your child near you in the shopping centre so they don't get abducted. No, but... And yeah. one is to keep your child abducted. <laughs> but the thing was is that they were abducted in the house, but at the same time, the, the parents would take the kids out and they had, like, that Stockholm syndrome where they would mm. happily go out with the parents and just know that they had to come back home and get chained... Like, dogs. Like, they trained them yeah. to be dogs. I don't know where I'm going with this, but... Uh, we're off to a very light yeah, start. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. Um, I, if you guys were thinking that this was going to be anything less than what the podcast is, it's just it's just me yelling about shit, but also Josh is here. So that's, that's the show. Lost my wallet recently. I'm a fucking idiot. I keep losing shit. I lost my wallet. What happened was I, keep lo- I kept losing my wallet, and for Christmas, my mum bought me one of the... Have you heard of these tile things? They're called um, tiles. Yeah, I have seen them. Yeah. They're like GPS trackers that you put in your wallet or you put in your or you attach to your phone so that if you ever lose it, it will tell you where where it is. You can look at it on an app on your phone. Put it on your kid. Fuck. Set of delicious. Chuck one of them in his arms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was Lewis, not me. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so I get this tile and I'm like, oh, that's a really good idea. I lose my wallet like every single day. So I put it in my wallet, but I didn't activate it. I was like, oh, I'll activate that later. I opened it, read the instructions, chose not to activate it, put it in my wallet, and then I fucking lost it. And so I just lost my wallet and the Christmas present that my mum got me, and I haven't told her yet, but I was just like, oh, mum, I bought a new wallet. And I bought a new fucking tile thing, put it in there, and I was like, your tile's working. How long does it last for? Like, is it, it's obviously battery operated. I don't know. Right? It doesn't, you can't charge it or anything. I mean, I hope it lasts for more than three hours after you buy it, otherwise <laughs> I'm fucked. Yeah. You saw how I was with my phone before. I thought I lost my phone, it was in my back pocket. Should have put it in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to I wanted to talk a bit, little bit about how uh, how radio's going with with Luke and I. Um, it's going really well, but um, they they keep asking us to do more stories about the news. Like they want us to do more current news stories because me and Luke just get in and we'll, and we'll notice shit around the office and we'll just want to talk about that. But they get mad because we need to talk about what other people give a fuck about. But I just don't like I'll read the news of what everyone else on radio is talking about. I just don't give a fuck. And, like, uh, I noticed in the office they have um, about... uh, We've got a Coles underneath the radio office, and in our office there's about 15 Coles trolleys just in the office filled with radio technical shit that they've just stolen from Coles. (laughs) So I wanted to do a big segment calling Coles... (laughs) To let them know that the radio station stolen all of their trolleys, but they were like, "Now, why don't you read the news and do a couple of news stories? Maybe do that story next week." So I was like, "All right, open up the news." And the first story I read is, "My mum organised my rape." <laughs> That's the headline. I was like, "All right, well, we can talk about that. We'll <laughs> take your whole radio station." But uh, for some reason, they shot that down. So I was thinking we could talk about that. What do you think? Is that not somewhat prearranged marriage? Like, if I don't consent to marriage, marry marriage. If I don't consent to marry someone, then am I essentially not consenting to have lifelong sex with them as well? Well, I think the difference is, and it's an interesting point, I think you guys will love this, is the girl was 12. Fuck off, you cunts. Don't act like you're piss yourself when I talk about this shit when you're alone, okay? Just because you're surrounded by 99 other psychopaths doesn't mean anyone else is going to judge you. So what's the, what's the rest of the story? I don't know. I just thought the headline was fun. <laughs> but, um, no, I think... I don't know. I, don't, I actually have nothing to do with that story. But, um, no, I think arranged marriage is, is like, an interesting uh, thing that you bring up because... 
on Australian TV now, there's like this married at first sight television show. You know that one? And, and there's also like, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, which seems to be, I don't want to hang out with these fucking other degrades. <laughs> like that's the show where they live in the jungle and then there's, there's Survivor. And then there's also like The Bachelorette where there's a dude picking 15 different people. And I've kind of noticed that Australian reality TV is just taking an issue that's a massive problem in the third world and then making white people do it. <laughs> and then you're like, it's TV, like Bachelorette, a dude picking 15 women, that's like uh, in Syria when a guy just has 15 wives. I'd love to see the Muslim edition of it where it's just like, oh, fuck it, I'll marry you all. <laughs> or like, uh, Married at First Sight, that's just arranged marriages, which is a giant problem in India. And uh, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here is just having to fucking look at degrades, which is a huge problem. <laughs> no, but just living in poverty. It's like, oh, we'll make white people do it. And that's a show. I don't watch, I just don't watch TV. Yeah, I only, I only see it because of the radio station where you get sent emails of what's happening oh, in, in TV and radio. And I, have, I read it and I'm like, oh, I don't give a fuck. Half of the people on there, I, don't, I, I genuinely don't know who they are. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's it. I just don't know who they are. <laughs> um, could you imagine, just, just out of interest, I'd like to know what you think about this. Could you imagine like getting to a, like I wonder with these, you know, the celebrity drug rehab shows and stuff mm. like that, like, this whole idea of show business and, and fame and, and chasing that for so long that you could get to a point where you're so fucked up by drugs that the only way for you to resolve drugs is to sell it and try and get a TV show out of it and you'd rather yeah. just be on like, Jesus fucking Christ, like, yeah. we're fucked. This is the end. <laughs> I hate to say it, the world is coming to an end. Yeah. Uh, that's it, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you very Enjoy. much, good night. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. Um, I've got a, I, I wanted to do a little test here, because I'm in Brisbane now. Uh, I have a box of Savoy's here. Yeah, have you guys ever seen Savoy's? Yeah. No? You guys are all into jazz, right? You bought some jazz. Yeah, bring it up here. <laughs> all right, so let me, okay, so I noticed that for some reason, uh, Give him a round of applause, yeah. by the way. <laughs> so, for some reason, so Arnott's make these two biscuits that are completely the same. They're in the same fucking box. It's even the same font, isn't it? They're even the same things. <laughs> like, surely they didn't take photos of your day, Greg. It's got to be fucking 90 centimetres to the... Because I, I wanted to test. I'm so glad you brought these jats here so I can throw them in the bin later. But, <laughs> I wanted to like test if they, if they do taste different because I have a theory, we've been working on this theory for like a week, that Savoy's and Jats are actually, uh, the only reason why people don't like Savoy's is because they've never had them. Because in Melbourne, we have Savoy's and Jats, but everywhere else in the country, they only have Jats. Did you bring a box as well? <laughs> Who else brought Jats? No? Good. Fuck. Right? So I was thinking, Josh, because you've never had Savoy's. No. No, I was no. thinking if you could just just taste a jat for me. Okay. Yeah, that's a jat. It's hard to tell the difference. Yeah. yeah. Let me crunch. Crunch. Yeah. All right. Now, have, have a Savoy, man, and tell me which one's better. And if, there, if you can even taste the difference. Can I just look at the aesthetic difference? Because <laughs> they do look the same. Actually, not really. Sort of, not really. No, yeah. This one looks like it's going to be fluffier, more like a Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a bite. Right. It's crunchier, mm -hmm. and it tastes more buttery and salty. Salt, 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 salt. <laughs> What's your verdict? Put me on fucking Master Chef. <laughs> <laughs> What's your verdict? Um, don't drink. Don't drink, don't eat biscuits out of a fucking box is my verdict. <laughs> what are you, 11? Jesus, come on. I mean, I mean, no, um, it's all week. Um, oh, Jesus, it's tough, isn't it? <laughs> are they just the same? Basically, well, that one's more buttery and it's got more. Now I'm the fucking sad cunt. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's our verdict. I do like them. Oh, that's the boys better. Yeah. Fuck yeah. it. I fucking told you guys. I told you all. The boys with the better biscuit. <laughs> no, you just haven't had it, man. Here, have a Savoy cunt and you'll fucking eat your words. Yeah? Have one. And just try and, just honestly, tell me, what do you reckon? Better than Jats or not? Nah? 
you're going to start a fucking another Savoyism. It's going to be like feminism or anything else, and people are going to splinter into yeah. society. And I've already got a name, bro, the Savoy Boys. <laughs> what do you reckon? I heard Josh was uh, doing a little bit of banter with someone who had a, had a story here. Because what, what I was going to do uh, is a little bit of live miscellaneous bit at the end. I do have, a, have an email to read, but I was wondering if, if anybody in here tonight has a fucked up story or a question or anything that they would like me and Josh to uh, solve their life with. Uh, should we start with the guy that Josh was talking to before? Yeah? What, what's your name, man? My name's Tim. Tim? All right. What's, what's your problem? What's your issue? Tell me all about it, man. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, this happened about two years ago. Right. So when I was just graduating high school, about to head off to uni with my girlfriend at the time. Uh-huh. And uh, I get this text one day, Saturday morning, just chilling out, playing some games on my Xbox, just chilling. You've fucking prepared this, haven't you? <laughs> You're like, I know exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah, keep going. About, mate. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I just get this text, right, from her. It's a video of her in a gangbang with five guys, all from her sushi shop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I'm good at all. I'll tell you something, son. <laughs> That's not the first time. <laughs> That's, a, that's in the deep end. That's jumping in the deep end. Five <laughs> people. In a, it wasn't on the train, was it? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was in the back of the sushi shop. Right, fishy. Nice. <laughs> yeah, well, that'd be the best way to mask the smell, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's that smell? Ah, it's fresh fish, man. <laughs> Don't smell fresh to me. <laughs> Alright, does anyone else have, have any life dilemmas that need answering here tonight? No. Yeah, yeah I know. My friend does. <laughs> really? Yeah. How did they get that job? Um, Is the owner blind? <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, no, but my, my other question is, I've seen Indian people work at Chinese restaurants and I'm cool with that, but I've yeah. also a Chinese person work at an Indian restaurant and be like, not eating it. <laughs> <laughs> not authentic. Yeah, it's like if you go into a kebab shop and the guy behind the counter like isn't sweaty, it's like, this isn't what I want. I want to go in there and be like, you look like a kebab. Piece of shit. I'm a piece of shit, and then I want to eat a piece of shit meal and just feel like a piece of shit. You don't want to walk in and be like, hey man, you get good service and he sits you down and gets you cutlery. It's like, dude, no. I want to get raped by this meal, man. You'll fucking laugh. Every time you come to one of my, how many shows of mine have you been to? Three, what's your name again? Sarah, that's right. I, <laughs> I've got a confession, Sarah, because Sarah and Liam, they come to, you guys come to my shows quite a lot. You guys used to be dating, yeah? And now you're not together anymore. I remember Liam organized that he was gonna fly both of you down for my comedy special um, to come and see it. And then I think he told me, oh, we broke up, so I'm gonna bring someone else. And I was so happy that your laugh wasn't going to be at my comedy special. And it's nothing against you, it's just your laugh. Me and Jazz were talking about where we were going to sit you. Like, we weren't going to deny you entry, but we were going to sit you way the fuck away from any of the microphones that we were going to use. But thank you for coming to this podcast so I can follow you for this. A round of applause for Sarah. I imagine it must have been an amicable breakup then. Yeah? That's good. You said yeah, she said nothing. <laughs> well, it's good that you guys... Uh, so when did you... When Josh was talking about this before. When did you stop, uh, stop like, not talking to each other? Uh, start of January. Start of January. It was like, oh, fuck, let's go see Louie. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And then you were like, I'll oh, bring two other chicks too. Yeah, awesome, sweet. I, I know that's like it's funny. It's funny to make jokes about, but like generally, that's that's beautiful that you're able to, you know, like we hold so many grudges. Like someone fucking cuts me off in traffic, and I'm ready to fucking go Kim Jong Il on the car, right? <laughs> <laughs> like we didn't break up until we had some big fight or something. We just grew apart. I know, but but still, people find like we have this preconceived idea that when we break up with someone, it's like that's it. You're ne I'm never going to speak to you again. I fucking hate you. But you've obviously got past that, and that's beautiful. And if everyone can do that, then Jesus Christ, the worst, the world would probably be a fucking better place. No, it is good. It is good. Hey. Tim, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, do it. That's a good. See, that's oh, a good. Tim uh, can't do anyone. That's the definition. <laughs> that's that's oh, a good. Oh, that's oh. good. <laughs> I think I think there is a there is a key difference. You guys didn't break up because Sarah had a gangbang with five other people at the sushi restaurant, did you? No, no. I thought it might have been a Brisbane thing. <laughs> um, you know, I, I like I love uh, coming to Brisbane and performing in Brisbane because generally the crowd is just full of animals, <laughs> um, as uh, you know, as evidenced by the dude who has a girlfriend who gets gangbanged at sushi restaurants <laughs> and just all this other shit. Whenever I come to Brisbane, there's always a fucked up story in the audience. I remember the first time I came to Brisbane, I did a I did a show in like a theatre that was bigger than this, it's but only, down. hey, it's shutting down in April. It's shutting down in April. The yeah. venue. I am not surprised. <laughs> which which venue? Uh, uh, New Blood Theatre. It's closing in April. Yeah, they announced the other day on Facebook. They. Oh, well, they didn't tell me. I booked a fucking show there. <laughs> 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 
When's the show? What? When's the show? Like April 7th or something? Is that a couple of calls? April 29th. Shows until then are still happening, so yes. Okay, well, thank you. Tickets on sale soon. Yeah, but that place, uh, I, I love that place, but I remember the first time I went there, only 17 people came, and I, I, uh, I found out why when I left the venue, because I left the venue and I just looked around, and it was just all prostitutes and strip joints, massage parlors, and I was like, oh, it's this kind of place. <laughs> like here, in the venue that we are in, I walk around, and there's like a Rolex shop and all the high-end shit, and then you go down the Fortitude Value, and Valley, and it's just gangbangs. <laughs> that's probably where that sushi joint is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's great, man. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I think that's really cool that you guys can, can not fucking hate each other because that is so the opposite of the advice that I give every fucking week. <laughs> you break up with someone, never talk to them again, fuck them. Pretend they live in space. <laughs> Did anyone else have any have any um, uh, questions that, that, that they have or about their own lives? No? How about for us, for me and Josh? How did you do? <laughs> About seven and a half inches. It's really, it's kind, it's really annoying because I need to get the bigger condoms, but they don't really sell them anymore. Like I remember, I went to. Oh, this is a funny story. It happened a couple of days ago. I, I went to a supermarket. I tried to find them, couldn't find them. And then I went to. I was like, fuck, where would they be? I just went to a university and went to the supermarket there. Biggest condom selection I've ever seen in my life. Like there was like varieties on varieties. There's like electro shock dummies. All this kind of shit that I didn't even see. So I, I ended up stocking up, I've got like four boxes. Not because I'm fucking that much, just because they're so hard to find. I go to the self-serve checkout and I scan one, put it in the bag, and then the machine fucks up. <laughs> and it says like in, in like giant text, like the brand of the condom, large or whatever the fuck it said, on giant screen. And then I had three other boxes I had to scan. And then this girl comes up to me to help me with the machine. And then she scans her ID pass and she sees it and then, she, and then she doesn't like let me do it myself. She sees what I'm trying to buy. And I wasn't, I didn't buy condoms of gum or condoms of bananas or something. It was like just four boxes <laughs> of fucking condoms. And then she grabs them off me, she scans them all for me and she's like, mm, big night. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I've got a game back in a sushi truck. <laughs> most embarrassing shit. Any other questions not about my dick? How much do you weigh? Uh, 77 kilos at the moment. I put on a little bit of weight since the last podcast. That was a year ago. Two kilos. I'm still I'm still a, a borderline anorexic kind. Yeah, I know. I do, because I lost my wallet and all my debit cards got cancelled, so my gym <laughs> cancelled my membership. I can't go. I was super amped up to go and, and stalk girls around the gym, but I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> Hey? <laughs> Everyone keeps making fun of me. Maybe this would be good for you, right? You can judge whether or not I've bought a wallet or a purse, yes. right? Because everyone's been, everyone in my life is bullying me over this purse, right? Wallet. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, in my defense, okay, I went online, I went to the wallet section in the accessories, and I bought a men's wallet. That's how it was just described. Josh, just take a look at this. Is this... <laughs> Is this a wallet or is it a purse? It's, it's got, it's like, well, it's bigger than a wallet and it's got a zip around it. Um, fuck that's gay. Is that what you're it's probably worth more than your weekly salary. So, <laughs> it's Gucci. So, um, it can be whatever the fuck you want it to be. Really, what's it matter? It's a purse. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, but you know, as long as it's got money in it, then... <laughs> yeah, that's true. It doesn't have any money. It's been around the fucking purse. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I'm, I'm going to be hitting the fucking gym pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> so, guys, do you have, like, honestly, do you have any, any questions for us? I think we're just going to do a little bit of a Q&A at the end of this thing and, uh, and, then, and then wrap it up. We'll do photos with everybody. Do you have any questions of that? And then we'll do the last miscellaneous bit of the end email that I have, and that'll be episode 100. So I'll just throw it out to the floor. If you guys have any questions for me or for Josh, we can, we'll, we'll answer them and, uh, and it'll be a good time. Hey? It's going p absolutely pathetically. 
because I was I had my whole month planned out. Like January, I was like, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to book RACV driver's license tests. I mean, lessons. So like, I planned it all out. I was like, I'm going to get picked up at the radio station after the show and then drive myself home with the instructor. And then I lost my wallet with the fucking tile in it that was not activated. And then I just couldn't do anything. I had to suck dick just to get money to buy food. It sucked. Literally. Was that a sushi train? Or? <laughs> Look up with the comedy through line of this yeah. whole thing. It's not episode 100, it's just the fucking sushi episode. <laughs> no, but uh, I, am, I am working on my driver's license because it's getting in the way of my life. Don't lie! Ah, fuck off, <laughs> Jazz! <laughs> yeah, Jazz drives me everywhere like I'm an invalid. <laughs> it, it used to be, be alright when I was like 18, 19. It was like, oh cool, I don't have to drive myself anywhere. Now I'm 24. <laughs> it's fucking pathetic. <laughs> Hey? Yep. Uh, thank you very much, man. At least I'm not wearing a plaid button-up shirt. <laughs> With a bald cut, you nerd. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Any other questions? Have you ever been shouted by a bird? Yeah, once. Why? I have been too. <laughs> so I have been too. Well, he thinks he's just being targeted, so he's like making sure that all birds don't just hate him. It's alright mate, they shit on everyone. Uh, <laughs> is, is anyone here being shit on by a bird? Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Feel you know, better now? Tim's girlfriend's been shit on by five dudes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not your girlfriend mate. Ah, oh, ex-girlfriend, sorry mate, it's my girlfriend. Then. But sorry. <laughs> a little bit confused. Um, a a anybody else, any other questions? Or? Oh, that's by far the dumbest fucking video <laughs> I've ever made in my life. Uh, that idea, I actually, I wrote that video two years ago, and I only had the balls to make it, like, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think, I can't remember, I think I just heard, like, a, like a reality, uh, like, my mum watches reality TV, and she was watching some English Real Housewives bullshit, and I always like walk past the TV and I hear it going, and I, I just like to point at the TV and go, "She's a fucking cunt." And like I like he I like hearing like snippets of arguments and then going, "Ha, <laughs> her life's fucked." And then I just go about my day. But I heard I heard someone I know they were having an argument. She goes, "Oh, you're making me really cross," and I was like, "Oh, cross? That's funny." <laughs> that's an English way of saying angry. And then I thought of cross dresser, and I was like, "Ah, oh, what if someone was cross dresser?" But instead of dressing up as a woman, they got really angry when they put on clothes. And then it took me two years <laughs> to get the balls to make that fucking stupid video. And you know what? I think it's my finest work. Do it again! My ex-girlfriend, um, her mum was single and she was dating a guy. When I was dating Olivia, her, her mum was dating this dude. And he was a bizarre guy, very, very bizarre. And she, the mum came to me one night, she didn't like, know how to confess it to me, but she just said, Josh, she didn't know who to talk to. She said, Josh, I need to tell you something about Peter. And I said, what? And she goes, is this her husband? No, this is the guy that she's dating. She's dating, right. And she said, I opened up his cupboard and it was full of dresses. And she, oh. yeah. <laughs> and she asked him about it, like, because she thought, well, she assumed that maybe there was a woman living in the house or, but he was a, like a IRL crossdress, like they, they That's exist. That's Yeah. Because I think honestly, if like if I was a woman and I opened up a, a closet and it was full of women's clothes, I think I would honestly assume first that he's like a serial killer. <laughs> and he like all kills women shit, yeah. and keeps their clothes as trophies. But crossdress it makes way more fucking sense than that. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's like, it's different, because it's not a drag queen either, like a cross dress is like something that they just do in their spare time because mm. they feel more comfortable inside of that, but then are they trans, that's a whole other thing, and then I read something in the news today that trans people, or not all, I'm not going to say all trans people, but the community are upset and think that drag queens are offensive to trans people, and then... Well, it's always because gay men dressing up as like exaggerated versions of what women look like. It's, it's kind of like blackface. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's no. like, it's like <laughs> No, but the, the, obviously the dra it's like it's like the visual is, is similar where they like they take the exaggerated features and they turn it up to eleven. But I suppose uh, the blackface is because they hate black people, whereas drag queens are just because dudes like sucking dick in dresses, I suppose. <laughs> just a bit of a gay thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we're all learning something today, guys. Um, now, all right, 
well, before we do the last uh, question, um, Josh was talking with someone who uh, actually, from episode 79 when you were on the podcast, old mate's actually here today. Where are you, man? Yeah? Okay, I know you and Josh have already talked about this, but just for the benefit of people at home, what, you, we answered a question of yours yep. because you fucked someone's wife yep. and they were into it. Yep. So you, you cunt someone else, but you worked with her? Yeah, so I'm still good. I said yes to her. <laughs> oh! Wait, so 79 episodes, that's how many? That's like almost, that's like eight months. Are you still working there? Because yeah. last I heard, it fucked up the whole office and their marriage. Yeah. Give a quick <laughs> recap. Give a quick recap of the story for everyone who's missed it. Okay. Um, uh, like after I started, it was we got pretty friendly, and then um, one day she approached me saying, "Hey, like after I said a few salty things, so I just cut straight to her face." <laughs> <laughs> just, just a classic cut chat in the office. Yeah. Where do you, what do you kind of place you work at? people's wives in the library. <laughs> Shit, I mean, I suppose that's not any weirder than the sushi train. I guess it could kind of happen anywhere. Awesome. So is she a librarian? Yeah. That's so, like, that's such a stereotype in a shitty yeah. erotic fiction book. Oh and she's got a boring job in the day, but then at night time she's a total whore. Love it. <laughs> right? So you're, you're, like, filing books, fucking his, this dude's wife. Yeah. And um, he had given her the okay to sleep with me. And so, uh, then he. But he wasn't, he did not watch, no. as if I remember. Yeah, see, that's, that's the, see, with the whole cunt thing, Josh, let's have a, let's have a discussion about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I, with, with all fetishes and stuff, I try not to judge people because everyone everyone's into something a little bit fucked up. And, like, let's say, let's step into the mind of someone who's into that. If, you're, if you like that, cool. I can understand in the moment, enjoying it, being like, yeah, my wife's getting fucked by someone else, this is sexy, but I can't. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> yeah, well, it's hard, but like, I understand like, in the moment, if they're, if they're into it, they yeah. would be into it, but what I don't get is the drive home. <laughs> like, with her and without the other dude, and you just try it, like, what are you talking about? Like when no one has a bone, like everyone's done something fucked up or looked at some horrible porn when they're really like, when they're real horny. And then when it's, when you're done, you just look at your browser history and you go, you're a monster. <laughs> Why would you watch that? That's, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. <laughs> but, but imagine having to take that feeling home and then like three weeks later, I don't know, you're watching reality TV together. And, and a guy comes on TV and he's got the same name as the dude who fucked your wife, and you just be like, oh yeah, that happened. I don't understand that. Yeah. I'll never understand it. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I don't. But it's a, it's a thing, and I'm glad that you did it. Like, oh yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's two episodes worth of fucking content, mate. Yeah, so, we're starting into three now. So what, what was the last update that you sent me? So the definition of what they decided to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. And um, like she got all feelsy about it with me. I was like, I just wish it was. You think she like started to fall in love with you? I don't know. Uh, love's a big word, but <laughs> um, cuckies as well. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, Because I don't understand that, that she still works with you. Like, if I was him, I'd be like, yeah, just work at a different library. It's not like she's killing it in life. How old is she? Uh, like 35. And she's a fucking librarian. I'd be like, yeah, do anything else. <laughs> just get away, get away from this time. Oh, that's great, man. Give her a round of applause. Um, oh, I have one one thing to talk about uh, before we do the Miss Lane's video. I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, 
Are you, do you ever struggle, Josh, with, with accidentally being a giant asshole? Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, because I, because, well, you're, you're generally uh, quite a nice dude, but I, I try to be nice. Like, I, I, I honestly try, I want my reputation to be, oh, I thought he was going to be a cunt, but he wasn't. How nice. That's my, that's my reputation, but sometimes I mess it up. Like, I have to try to be nice, and I really fucked it up the other day uh, when I was doing radio with Lou. We're getting new air conditioners put into all of the studios, and so there's this tech guy who's helping all of the builders put air conditioning in the studio, and ours turned off right before we were about to go on air, and it was really hot. So I hit the button to go and talk to him, because he's in like his office, and you can hit a button and talk to the guy. And I'm like, hey, uh, Dan, a fake name, but I'm, hey, Dan, uh, the, I think the air conditioning has turned off. And he's like, oh, okay. Meaning like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I have other shit to worry about. And then I was like, oh, we don't know how to turn it on. And he goes, yeah, okay. And then I just said, is that not your job? <laughs> and I meant it like, I, I don't know, I don't, actually don't know how else to say it. Like, I honestly meant, oh, is, if that's not your job, tell me whose job it is and I'll annoy them. Sorry for bothering you. But it just came across as, fix it, cunt. <laughs> and he came down and he was all flustered. And, and, and I had obviously really offended him. And uh, so now I'm just fucked with the tech at work. No, I like, I have, I have a genuine respect. Because, like, sometimes I come across passive-aggressive but it's only to people that I know and I know very well that, are, that I'll just say something bluntly and then I realise, oh fuck, that came out wrong, in the exact same manner. But I, I actually find um, an, an attraction to, to women that are really blunt. Like at the start, they'll just say something that's just so upfront. Like I've got a birthmark on my eye. And I was in Sydney the other day and this girl came up. The first thing she came up, she was beautiful as well. And she came up and she said, what's that thing on your face? <laughs> and I went, I fucking hate you and I want to fucking love you at the same time. Um, I appreciate a sort of directness that so many people lack now. Everyone's trying to beat around the bush and try to be nice. If you're a cunt, fucking embrace it, all right? Just get around it. Well, I, should have, I should have said, is that not your job? You can't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then maybe you would have been like, ah, oh, he's very direct. Maybe yes. I should have sex with him. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I do like this. I'm going to come home to a HR fucking issue. Yeah. Um, all right, so I have, uh, I have got one question uh, for Miss Lane's bit at the end, um, and then we're going to, to leave it there, guys. I need to open my laptop. Fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go, the surprise. Oh, yeah, just the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this email started off with the, the subject line, Josh, is uh, my co-worker thinks I'm gay and is now acting strangely around me. Right. So immediately I'm like, this is a ripper. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, I love all the content you're putting out and I'm looking forward to seeing the comedy special. Blah, blah, thanks man. Um, <laughs> my name's Tom and I work as a bartender in a nightclub and my co-worker Simon has started to think that I'm gay due to a joke that one of the other bartenders made about my proclivity for fucking guys. <laughs> Tom, I think I've found your problem. <laughs> You'd be fucking too many guys. <laughs> okay, so obviously one of the other bartenders is saying, making jokes about Tom fucking dudes, right? But then this other guy is taking it seriously. Um, to give some con context, there's a, there's a reason why Simon could have believed this joke is the truth. <laughs> I fucked other dudes, is that what it is? <laughs> uh, because working behind a bar has made the other guys and I five times more laddie. Ah, oh, yeah. So it's turning into a football club where they grab each other on the arms and pretend it's not homosexual. Um, as there is a lot of butt grabbing, fuck it, nail it. <laughs> as there is a lot of butt grabbing and dick slapping, <laughs> I haven't read. I just read the subject line and I decided to read it. But butt grabbing and dick slapping. What the fuck's dick slapping? <laughs> oh, it's just going. Like, that's painful. That why would you? That's yeah. That's not a. Because if you're working behind the bar, right, the bar's here, how does a dude slap your dick if you're facing, he's going to have to give you like a wrench around. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's been a lot of butt grabbing and dick slapping that goes on during service. 
Um, when Simon first started working at the nightclub, this kind of behavior freaked him out because he spent the vast majority of his life living in Pakistan where the way men interact with each other is very different. Yeah, so if there was a butt grab, there'd be a beheading. <laughs> 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 For the last few weeks, Simon has been quite standoffish when I'm around and giving me odd looks when he walks past the bar or, wa or walks behind me to refill the fridges and glass racks. This makes working more challenging because we all work in quite a tight space where brushing up and sliding past each other is unavoidable. So you might as well add in a dick grab <laughs> while you're going through. Any advice you give me, much appreciate. Hope you have a shit one. Oh, okay. I thought this email was going to start off with the co-worker thinking he's gay and then hitting on him. But uh, he's from Pakistan, so he's just quite homophobic. <laughs> right, so... Is he offended that he's not being hit on by, the, by that guy? All yeah. the other boys are getting around him, and, and uh, Pakistan boy isn't. So yeah. he's a little bit maybe flustered that he's not joining the... I think that might be an issue. He's trying to, he's trying to get a homosexual sushi train going. <laughs> 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 um, well, I don't know. I think that... I don't think it's like his problem, right? I think it's the other dude being homophobic and weird about dudes touching each other. Although dick grabbing is weird. Like if I walked in, if I, when I started radio, if I walked in and everyone was just giving each other hand jobs and triple M, <laughs> I'd be like, hmm, was kind of expecting it, but didn't want to see it. <laughs> this is strange. And now he did see it, he's still there, so. Uh... Oh, it's great, perfect, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my hands are now. I'm getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> Lock it in, Eddie. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm glad I said that at the end. They got to sit for an hour and shit. Yeah, like that. Um, yeah man, I, I don't know. I think my advice is, is I think that maybe you guys should stop grabbing each other on the dick while you're working. Yeah, we'll just stop stressing that. Wait, how, how long do you work at a bar? How long is a bar shift? I don't know. Like how, has anyone here worked at a bar? No? Like three hours. Three hours? Yeah, like three or four hours. Maybe he's, maybe he's racist. Maybe deep down on the inside, he's just terrified there's a dude from Pakistan staring at him and he's not sure if it's like a homophobic thing or if he's got a bomb strapped to him or some sort of... I'm not saying I'm saying that's, that's what this, this man may think, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, it could be a little bit of both. Like the homophobia could incite a bombing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just think, uh, I think you just stop being a weird kind of work, man. You don't need to grab each other's dicks at the bar. I think that's your issue. Yeah, I think the guy from Pakistan's probably just... I think that's a very... Quite reasonable, actually. Yeah, just stop grabbing your mate's dick at work and Pajin will be fine. Miscellaneous bit of the end. It's always a good part. Yeah, you're welcome, yeah, everyone. Yeah. Um, all right, well, that, that brings us to the end of, um, of the episode 100. I really do appreciate you guys coming out and, uh, and sitting through this, and, and Josh as well for coming. Give him a round of applause for Josh. Um, this, this podcast really started out as just a thing that I decided to do. Like, I, I, I remember I wanted to do a podcast like what Josh does with, with guests and, and shit, but I just couldn't be bothered to organise it. I could barely organise myself to arrive at any kind of time. So like, there's no way I'm going to be able to get guests. So I just decided to start talking by myself. And it kind of came from the Nothing Inc. podcast. Does anyone remember that? Yeah, so that was a podcast I did with um, Carly Kalafala and Elliot Loney, and that was really good, but it was just so hard to get us together in a room, and I really enjoyed podcasting, but I wanted to keep doing it, but I just decided, oh, I'll just try one by myself, and I, I thought that it would suck, and kind of did, but uh, you guys were so supportive with it that I've kept it going, and I've been pretty much weekly since then. Um, and it's crazy to, to hit 100 episodes. It's, it's really, really cool. So thank you so much to all of you guys for listening and everyone at home. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> even if you're on a couple of times. Um, and I'm just going to, just, just before we go, I'm just going to open the floor to any questions that you guys have for, for me and Josh just before we end it, in case you thought of something in the break. Otherwise, we'll, we'll end it. We'll do photos and I'll meet everyone. Yeah, that's going to be coming, so those videos I've figured out, we're going to film two a day and then stagger the release of it. So the next two we're filming in two weeks, 
And then from there, I'm aiming to release them like uh, like twice a month. So that'd be like cooking, the instructions, Lou review, cooking instructions, by monthly book. And that'll be my fucking plan from two weeks from now. But in the meantime, I've got a whole bunch of sketches that, that I like, but not many other people do. <laughs> uh, anything else, guys? How's the piss rod? Hey? Over here? How's the piss rug? The piss rug? Oh, yeah. In the, it, wait, where's my piss rug? I forgot this rings a bell. Oh yeah, well no one pissed in it, man. You might have heard that story correctly. Yeah, my storage unit flooded, um, and the carpet got all soaked, and I left it in there. Josh. That happened to my place as well. Oh the really? Storage, yeah, well, yeah, it flooded. Did you have carpet in there? Yeah, fuck no. Oh, what did you do with it? Because I I left mine in there, and it's been two or three weeks now, and I haven't gone back. It fucking stunk. Yeah, so yeah. mine's fun. Did you fix it or did you have to throw it out? No, they, they, the people there like that I, you know, rented the place from, they had to fix it, but it was a fucking, it was a fuck up. And it's stuck. It's not like piss carpet. So, yeah, it's a good thing. Okay, right. Well, so they paid for it, did they? I'm guessing. I certainly fucking did. I'm okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to email them until this comes to Yeah, fucking hell, they care. Because otherwise it's just stinking up my locker for no reason. A, couple, a few people yelled out at the same time. Who was over here? You want to try some more? Yeah, man. Come over here. Yeah. A couple on the floor for you. <laughs> yeah, come on, come around and grab a, grab a Mickey. Uh, who, who else asked a question? My worst heckle. What's my worst heckle? I think the worst. So far. There you go, man. What's your name, bro? Lance. Lance? All right, and you've never had a Savoy? No, I've already fixed that. Yeah, I'm a yellow clicks fix. What do you reckon, dude? Clicks fix. Dude, I've been talking about biscuits on the radio oh, for like a month. Yeah. <laughs> Too long. I fucking told you! Savoy's better than Jad's every it's time. Same fucking thing. Yeah, <laughs> but with more butter, which is better. Thank you very much. Round of applause for Lance. <laughs> and, yeah, my worst, my worst heckler would, would definitely have to be that guy at the comedy special. I talked about this on my podcast, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you guys heard the story. There's a horrible heckler at my comedy special that we should have kicked out because he kept going. But um, I would say, in, in terms of, <laughs> of funny heckler stories, there's been a couple that have got me. Um, and I think, uh, uh, I can't really remember one, one guy who, ah, oh, in Perth, I remember. So generally I wear really bright shoes when I, when I tour and stuff, when I do shows, I like to buy the really loud shoes when I go on stage. So sometimes people yell shit about my shoes. I was in, it was either Perth or Adelaide, I can't really remember, but one guy got up to use the bathroom and I was wearing fluoro yellow shoes. So he got up to use the bathroom, so I picked him out and I you know, made fun of him a little bit. And then he said something about my shoes and then, I can't remember what he said, but I said back to him, don't fucking talk shit about my shoes when he was wearing New Balance, when you've got those glowing neon fucking ends on your shoes and made fun of New Balance and everyone lost their shit and he left for the bathroom and he didn't come back. <laughs> it was like 15 minutes into the show and he just went home. He didn't want to come back in his fucking New Balance, which, you know, I was pretty proud of, to be honest. <laughs> What about you, Josh? Do you have any horrible hacker stories or funny ones? Oh, I remember a lot. Um, I've had people wait for me in car parks before. I've had. There's something interesting about comedy, or at least some of the audience that I've attracted over the years. Uh, a lot of them are very masculine men because they they sometimes think that if I you know play a bogan, then that, that I actually am. But it's not. It's scripted, highly edited bullshit, right? But because we did the same theatre in March last last year. Um, yeah. For the comedy festival. Oh, there was that one, but that's that's uh, like uh, he was probably level three. Like, yeah, I've I've had some. Well, what 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 was interesting about that was just the difference between our two audiences. Even in, in like inner city Melbourne, it was so huge. Like I've got a bunch of nerds and losers because I am one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, and then you got you had a whole bunch of bogans because you kind of do the bogan character, mm. and mm. the just the difference between the two was was really interesting to see. Yeah, well, I guess that happens with comedy. I guess yeah. I mean, everyone's audience is different. Same with musicians. So the, I, I'm sick of Pink, by the way. This is just this has just come up because it's really grinding my gear. But I cannot fucking see the Pink. Or the artist. Both. Um, <laughs> they're correlated. I have. Do you know how much Triple M are getting paid to put that fucking song on fucking rotation? Uh, I don't know. Every time I get in the car, that fucking stupid Pink song comes on. And I started sitting there and thinking about, like, who the 
who is a fan of Pink? Like, what audience is she? Like, it seems. I think it's, I think it's mums. Yeah, yeah, and mums. single mums that have been through domestic violence. <laughs> every, <laughs> it is. Because every song is like, here's a family portrait. We look very happy. It's like, Jesus, fuck, what are you drawing on Pink? You're a liar. Yeah. Because she's jacked, right? She's so any, any woman who's recently had a black eye is like, oh, if I had triceps, you wouldn't have done that. <laughs> but with it, when you bring on how much a triple M getting paid, it's interesting seeing like the inside of radio because I can't work out if they if they do get paid to play songs or not. Because um, you know how artists right have plaques when their songs sell a million copies. The radio station gets sent that shit too. So like we have stuff from the Killers saying thanks to Triple M for supporting our single. And I think that that means that, I mean, obviously someone chooses to play this shit and that has an impact on how much it sells, but I'm, I don't know if they actually get paid for it or not. Because the artist gets paid, right? The radio, you wouldn't pay the radio. So. They get paid through royalties, but the radio doesn't have, is not able to get advertisers on air if they don't have shows to play, so, or music, if, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, the, the record labels give them massive amounts of money. That's why you hear certain songs over and over and over again. That's how some shitty artists can become huge overnight because the record labels just go, all right, you're it, we're gonna put $50 million into playing you constantly throughout, you know, Southern Cross Australia or one of these big, uh, this is just getting boring now, but um, advertising, it's a hell of a, it's a son of a bitch, but. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the first things I was told is it's called commercial radio for a reason, because the fucking commercials. Yeah. And it's like, it, it, when you're in there, like inside the offices, 60% of the department is like ads yeah. and shit. It's, yeah. uh, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Don't stop before it expires. Between that and Eddie McGuire, I'm done. Um, all right, was there anyone else who yelled out that during that wedding? Other questions? Or? You're married to Tristan. Yeah, I am. I really need to get the divorce story, babe. <laughs> yeah. It's just something that we've just forgotten about. But now that it's legal in Australia, I think I can get the divorce in Australia. But I'm not. I'm not too sure if I have to do it in New Zealand or in Australia, because for a while I was married in New Zealand, but not Australia because it wasn't legal, but now that it is legalised, I think I'm married here. I don't know, I just need to sort it out. I just have to be fucked. It's probably just a Google search away. <laughs> Are you there? Any hand up? What's the biggest trouble you've gotten in for a joke, like the dream world place? Or? Uh, the biggest trouble I've gotten in for a joke, I don't think it's happened yet. I think... <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I've actually got in, because the nature of what I do with the online thing, I don't, nothing can be taken away from me, do you know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no one above me that can be like, oh, you can't do your podcast anymore, or you can't tour anymore. So, I don't think I've actually ever gotten in trouble for a joke. I mean, I think the nature of my comedy, opportunities within mainstream media have been denied, like I couldn't get in, but I don't think I've ever lost anything yet. I mean, we'll find out when this podcast comes out. Might be the radio show. <laughs> um, but that hasn't happened yet. But yeah, when my comedy special comes out and the Dream World joke goes up online, maybe it will be that and we'll all have a good laugh about it. But yeah, I think it, it is interesting comedians getting in trouble for jokes. I would never... I don't, I don't think I ever see myself apologising for a joke. I mean, the jokes. I think, I think the thing that we have, that we're lucky about is we have our own audiences, whereas you know, a lot of comedians that get in trouble for jokes are, you know, they're on TV or they're doing open mic rooms where people are coming to that show not necessarily knowing what they're going to see and not subscribing to the same views, whereas you know what you're coming to see, you know. Don't get pissed and upset if you hear a fucking, you know, awful fucking joke like the Dream World one, like, you know. Yeah. Not that like it's an awful joke. No, it's, it's a, a great joke. joke. It's uh, a great joke. It's just, the, it's, it's just an awful <laughs> joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's what, that's what, to me, comedy has always been um, a way for me to talk about awful things and make light of them. I've always seen that if you're, to get past an issue in your life, no matter what that is, if you're able to laugh at that, that's the only sign, truly and psychologically, that you've got past that point of it actually meaning anything. So I think comedy is actually extremely important to laugh at yeah. really awful things, if you do it in the right way. Yeah, I think, I think there's, a, there's I think that with awful topics like the dream world stuff or cancer or anything like that, I think that you can definitely 
You can joke about anything, but the darker the subject, the better a comedian you need to be, because it is harder to make funny, especially if it's a recent thing or, or whatever. Um, so I think that you just need to, I think the only time you would ever have to apologize is if it was literally just not funny, and you should be like, oh, I didn't do my job. Sorry about it, guys, here's your money back. <laughs> yeah. You just sunk. Um, all right, well, I think I'm gonna end it there. If, we'll do one more question, you man? Yeah, I do really want to do that. I want to do Night in the Life. I want to rent out a nightclub. I was uh, I was trying to get Cloud Nine, but that is they hate it. They fucking hate Ping and Pete because I am. I say with Ping and I say that he's Australia's most famous club promoter, and he works for Cloud Nine, which is a nightclub in Melbourne. Um, and Really, he, he doesn't, obviously, he's not actually, he's a fucking character, he's not real, he's not actually a promoter, but he, he definitely is their most famous promoter. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But he just doesn't work there, and his name is Pinger Pete, <laughs> which they have to be so far away from the drugs image because it'll just ruin their whole club. Yeah, so what the truth is. But, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I mean that's that that's what Cloud Nine is. It's just it's fucking a whole bunch of Ping and Pete's trying to rape girls in there. <laughs> if, if if you had been there, you'd be like, ah, spot on observation, not even a joke. <laughs> that place is a shithole. But um, yeah, I do want to do Night in the Life. I just want to rent out a nightclub and, and do it properly. I've I've written about half of it, but I want to do it justice. I think it's like a Patreon goal, but I might just fucking do it. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming, and thanks for listening, and thank you very much, Josh, for coming. That was episode 100 of the Spirit Sundays podcast. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Thank you very much, and uh, here's to another 100 episodes. Thanks for coming. <laughs>